hit record button. All right, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Oh, we got another one, I'll admit it. So we're excited to host our first ever Understanding Assisted Living webinar. Today's presentation is sponsored by Autumn Leaves, Monticello West, Parkwood Healthcare, Signature Point, and Walnut Place. Uh, these are managed by Life Care Services, an LCS company. And LCS has more than four decades of proven experience in senior living, ensuring the satisfaction and well being of our residents nationwide. We're joined today by community team members who are experts in supporting new residents and their family members find the right care when they're searching for an assisted living apartment. Our guest speakers range from assisted living directors, community relations directors, to sales and marketing directors. They are Anne Marie Barker with Parkwood Healthcare, Camille Flores with Walnut Place, Carol Bruno with Autumn Leaves, Nan Mulvaney with Monticello West, and Nancy McCarthy with Signature Point. In addition to our panelists, we have videos from several adult children who started out very much in the same place you are today, searching for the right assisted living community for their loved one. We also have a video from a resident who's gonna share her experience with us. I'm gonna mute all participants and I'm gonna turn off all cameras with the exception of our presenters. to get started. So I'm going to, we've compiled a list of the most frequently asked questions, and I'm going to kick us off by asking those top questions from our expert panel. And the first question is for Carol Bruno at Autumn Leaves. Carol, tell us, what is assisted living? Well, assisted living uh, is a place where seniors can get personalized care, three nutritious meals, a wide range of activities that can really engage them in the things that they have done in the past. And some of the amenities are the beauty salon, housekeeping and uh, laundry services, as well as three chef prepared meals and transportation. We, we do provide transportation to and from a doctor. So that is also something part of it. Our assisted living may be the right choice for your aging loved one if they need, if they're a fall risk, if they need medication management, you know, if they are feeling light, isolated and alone. And certainly with COVID, that has really had a, an effect on our loved ones that have been isolated in their own home. Uh, we have a committed 24-hour care staff that provide uh, personalized care. And they provide, could be bathing and grooming. And, there, and the residents get involved in all kinds of activities and they become a family within the residential community, uh, also relating to one another as well as the staff. Thank you, Carol. So while every community is different, it sounds like assisted living is a really great option for people who need help, like you said, with that personal care, the bathing, the grooming, medication management, and the community's amenities and services can support that and their independence when they don't require 24-hour nursing care. So my next question is for Nancy at Signature Point. How do you pay for assisted living? That's a really good question. Paying for assisted living can actually be confusing for people, and it may seem like you're in a maze. You'll hear things like, Private pay. Private pay means that you're paying privately from your own resources like social security, pension, um, family help. Um, and then you've also got your VA aid and attendance. Um, most communities have a VA aid and attendance representative that, that they use. So I would definitely reach out to your communities that you're working with for a reputable person to actually help you, guide you through the VA aid and attendance. Um, it is a good resource. 
Um, you do not have had to retired from the military. You just have to have served 90 days active duty. Um, and it is eligible for um, surviving spouses. Uh, surviving spouses do get a portion of that aid in attendance. So it is a really good benefit to look for. Uh, Long-term care policies, um, definitely investigate whether your loved one or your family member has had a, a long-term care insurance policy. Those are definitely great um, assets for paying for assisted living. Um, they can range anywhere from $50 a day up to $300 a day, depending on the policies. Some of them go for you know two to three years. Some of them go lifetime. So it really just depends on how a senior prepared for um, end of life. Um, and then you've got your Medicaid options and Medicaid is actually um, very narrow. Um, there's different Medicaid, there's community Medicaid, and there's facility Medicaid. And Camille and I both work at communities that have um, facility-based um, Medicaid, and it is very narrow. You have to um, qualify both medically and financially um, for Medicaid, and I would definitely uh, work with a community to um, move into a community that if you're looking at funds running out in your lifetime, move to a community that actually has Medicaid um, and work with the community to position your loved one or your family member into a, uh, a Medicaid slot. And we can actually help guide you in those processes. Our um, business offices can help. We can provide resources that can actually help you with you know, all the ins and outs of Medicaid. So that is something that you really want to work closely with a Medicaid community if, if, you, if your loved one's funds are going to run out in the future. Other things that you can look at would be insurance policies, um, houses, pension plans, um, and there are companies like um, Elder Care Financial that actually can take some of those resources like an insurance policy or um, help you with VA aid and attendance and actually give you funds up front while you're waiting for those funds to come in so that you can move into a community sooner. So I hope that those things actually um, can help. And if you have additional questions, I'll be able to answer some at the end. Thank you, Nancy. So my next question is for Camille at Walnut Place. How does assisted living support seniors? Yeah, so um, assisted living is specifically designed with uh, the aging adult in mind um, who wants to remain as independent as possible, but still requires some support 24-7. Uh, so from the way that our communities are designed uh, to meet the seniors' needs, so things like grab bars, easy access floor plans, um, things like that, and then also the accommodations that we offer to cater to, to you or your loved one's needs. So I like to think of assisted living as a cruise ship on land um, for the aging adult. So what that means is you have your very own team of directors uh, you, you know, that are here to meet your specific needs. You have a calendar of fun, age-appropriate activities every day. And all, of our, all our residents have to do is uh, join us and enjoy their retirement years. So every day is an opportunity um, for our residents to try something new, enjoy nutritious meals, make friends, all while knowing that they're safe and that they're cared for. Great, I love your comparison to a cruise ship on land. That's just fabulous. Because I mean, they do have it all. I mean, the activities, the, the, the meals are served, you know, their, their transportation is taken care of, their housekeeping, their laundry, it's all there. So they all have that peace of mind available to them with assisted living. Camille, let me ask you another question. What is the difference between assisted living and senior care? Okay, so this is a really great question. And I can tell you, I've met with so many families over the years that have already implemented the in-home senior care, and then they ultimately choose assisted living. So let me tell you why. Um, so senior care is a great option, uh, you know, to keep, keep the senior in their home for as long as possible. And what you get with in-home senior care is one caregiver, um, and they're gonna be there for the, the amount of time that you hire them for. So let me give you a, a real life example. So let's say that uh, your loved one requires eight hours a day of, of caregiving uh, because you work. So the average price is gonna be about $20 an hour. So you're looking at about $160 a day 
about 4,800 a month to have one person come in and make sure that your loved one's care needs are met, uh, the house is tidy, the meals are prepared, uh, their medications are, are being administered on time. Um, so you can see that can be a lot of work for one person. Um, and let me compare that to what you get in assisted living. So let's say our average price is uh, 4,000 a month. Let's break that down to $133 a day and break it down even more about $5 and change per hour. So what you get is you get 24 hours a day of a team of people. So you have a licensed nurse, a team of caregivers for your loved one, maintenance and housekeeping teams, um, an activities professional, three meals a day, uh, utilities are included, medication management is included. Um, and, and families have peace of mind knowing that their loved one's needs are covered 24 hours a day on the weekends, on holidays. And if someone does call out sick or something like that, you don't have to worry and stress about it. That's something that we take care of at the community. Um, so, so really it, there's, there's a big cost value that you can see, but also what you're getting um, for that amount that you pay each month. So, yeah. Thank you. My next question is for Anne Marie at Parkwood Healthcare. What's a typical day in the life of a resident in assisted living? Our assisted living residents uh, show up early for breakfast usually, but we also have those that sleep in. And that's what makes assisted living with those specialized plans for each resident special. Because if they're one that wakes up early, they get up, they have breakfast early, or they can choose to sleep in. And then after breakfast, we usually start with our activities, morning exercises. We do different kinds of things every single day. And then they'll have lunch. And then after lunch, whenever they um, get finished with lunch, they usually go in and take a nap or get dressed for the next activity because we keep them hopping all day long. And so our schedule keeps them with things to do all day and the afternoons will have even more activities going on. And our residents also, at least in my community, have impromptu things like sing-alongs and playing the piano and they play cards and dominoes that's even off the official schedule. And so their days are very full and rich, but at the same time, they cater to what each resident wants to do. What did they do before? What do they enjoy? And so we're able to take care of everyone's you know, their mental health needs and their socialization needs and not just hand them medicine and make sure they're fed. And so they have a very full day. A lot of times in the evenings or the mornings when it's cool, they go outside and sit in our courtyards and their days are hopping all day long. And then in the evenings, they're pretty much ready to turn in and they'll watch TV or stay up and snack or, you know, whatever it is that they like to do. Sounds like a lot of fun. I think this is actually a great time to share a uh, video from Mary Ann, who's a resident in assisted living over at Monticello West. So I am going to share that with you guys. Hey, uh, hey, pal, what, what do you need? They got consulting, oh, yeah, strategic planning, leadership development. What do you need? I, I had been in the hospital for six weeks, a nursing home for therapy for 17 days, and then I knew that I would need to move into an assisted living facility and had no idea where in Dallas that would be. My daughter did some investigating and came up with four places. And my daughter said, Mom, I've looked online and I've chosen a place that I think you and Dad will really like. It's Monticello West. Well, I had never heard of Monticello West. And I said, OK, well, let me see a picture of it. What does it look like? And so she pulled her iPad and found it, the picture, and showed it to me, and I thought, that looks homey. It looks like a place that's comfortable, 
that I can go in and sit down and read a newspaper, or I can just visit with someone in the living room area. That was appealing to me. So uh, she brought her dad out, and he had lunch here. They liked the food, and she brought her husband. And then we finally decided, or they finally decided, that this was a place that I needed to be. Living somewhere where you're comfortable, where you can make friends and feel safe, and main thing, feel at home. My husband passed away last September a year ago, and I moved out of a larger apartment into a smaller one, and it's a place that I never thought about leaving. I did not want to go back and have to go shopping, do my cooking, washing up after cooking, and I knew I physically was not really up to keeping an apartment up myself, even with help, maybe coming in once a week. And besides that, I would have my friends. And that, to me, has been so important. Having friends you can visit with, talk with in the dining room, uh, a staff that if you have a problem, you can go and speak to them about it, and they'll listen and then they can take action on something if it's needed. Or maybe you just need to go and have a chat with them. Just tell them how you feel about something. And that is something I didn't get in an apartment or in my home when we had a house. A person, especially a person who's aging, needs to think about, okay, for instance, I had a birthday just this month, and I thought, well, you know, I'm getting older. And then I thought, well, age is only numbers. It's the quality of life. How much do I enjoy living? How much do I get out of life living around others? Monticello West has been a perfect place for me. Love that video. So, Anne Marie, um, how do you ease the transition to assisted living? Well, I think the first thing you do is understand that your parents' fear about moving is it's normal part of the process, and it is a real emotion they're having. And so, make sure that you don't discount that. You know, no one wakes up and says, "Hey." I want to move to assisted living today. That sounds so exciting. Once they get here, they definitely feel that and they make their own home and make friends. But you know, when you're sitting still in your house, it's a big unknown and their emotions are real. And a lot of times they don't align with what we're trying to do. So just you know, take it easy with them and know that we're equipped on our end to deal with those emotions and to help them transition in here smoothly and make a good fit for them. And also, you might be a little scared too. You might think, you know, gosh, is it really time? Did we really do everything we could to keep them in the house? You know, you have those second guesses of your own, but when you're talking to your loved one, make sure that they don't see that they need to see you being the strong one you know when they when you were a kid they were the strong one for you you need to be the strong one for them and act like this is a fantastic idea even if you have your own hesitations and help them feel that encouraging spirit coming from you also let them see that this really is a very nice place to be. You know, if they are so reluctant that you can't get them out of their chair in their home, then let's do a virtual thing. You know, that's one of the blessings of COVID is that we learned how to do everything virtually. And so if they are one of those that you just truly cannot pry out of the house to come see us, we are so happy 
to set them up with a live virtual tour where I will walk around and show them everything, every square inch they want to see. But let them see, let them see that it's not as scary as they think it is. And as much as they can be, let them be a pro in part of that process. And then always, once you do move them in, and even a little before, you want to keep in touch with our staff. You know, we want to know what makes them such special people and their personal history so that we know how to love on them in the way that they need, because it is an individual thing. And so anytime that you hear them struggling with anything, let us know so that we can nip that in the bud and make sure that it doesn't fester. You know, we want to make sure that their transition here before they move in and after they move in is smooth and positive and pleasant. And that will help you get them moved is just to keep on the positive and keep them moving however slowly at the beginning in that forward direction. Thank you. It Thank sounds you. like a step-by-step -step approach can really ease that anxiety. It and certainly make is. Smoother. So Nan at Monticello West, let me ask you, when is it time for assisted living? Teresa, that varies. Um, there are all sorts of different indicators. And I suggest that uh, you start out just by looking at your loved one and considering these things. Uh, is your loved one dressing each day herself? And are the clothes changing or is she wearing the same clothes? Is hygiene an issue? Hair, makeup, uh, these acts of daily living that uh, each of us do every day are important to our well being and to our sense of self. And if these things start to slip, then other things will slip as well. You might look at your loved one and see if there's a weight loss. In our community, in the elder community, a sudden weight loss can be a sign of uh, serious illness. It also and often is a sign of depression or cognitive dysfunction that allows the resident not to get all of the nutrients needed for, uh, for a full life. What I would say is step back. I know most of you are already considering these things, but ask these questions. Uh, is your loved one still driving? Would you wanna be on the road with them when they're driving? Uh, are food items in the refrigerator fresh? Or do you notice that some food items have expired? Um, is the house as neat as it always was and as welcoming? Or is it starting to so sort of look a mess? These things tell you that acts of daily living are becoming challenging. And, uh, and then the timeline is determined just as you sort of watch for changes and make plans for changes. Yeah, Nan, what I hear you saying is that it just, for some people, there just comes a time when it's just no longer safe to live at home. And those questions are really great to help guide individuals in making that decision. Um, I think this is actually a great time to share a video from John. Uh, John, he couldn't be with us today, so he recorded a video and sent it to us, and his dad lives at Autumn Leaves. So let me share that with you. And he uh, fell in February and broke his leg and was, uh, after rehab, we moved into assisted, assisted living to give it a try, and he has stayed there uh, now for almost four months. Um, I wanted him to move in there years ago. Um, had he done that, he probably wouldn't have fell and broke his leg. But it's a difficult decision to make. And uh, I'd say that now he's there. He knows that it's the best option for him. Um, he actually said that it's, you know, in his mind, he was thinking of a nursing home that my mom was in, in a rural part of Texas. And the assisted living in Dallas is a much better uh, facility. He was pretty surprised that something like that existed at that price point. And he's told me more than once that he should have done this long ago. 
Uh, he just wouldn't listen to me. And um, uh, it's the best place for him. He does miss home, and that's a tough decision to make. But um, he is happy and has, you know, my biggest fear was that he would constantly say he wanted to go home and that he missed home. I mean, he, he hasn't said that once. So um, tough decision. I think if I could have come up with a better way to approach it and had him do it sooner, he, uh, he wouldn't have fell. But now that he's there, he's very happy that he did it. Um, for me, it uh, allows me to focus on my life and also ensure that he's safe and sound. And, and I'm actually more involved in his life now, um, now that he's closer, he's safer, and he's actually a lot less depressed. He at home was over-medicating, uh, lonely, and now that he's got folks around him and they're taking great care of him, he likes the food and he, um, he likes the, the shower convenience and all the support that he gets uh, in assisted living. So it's been an overall great thing, uh, tough thing to approach, but if you can come up with a way to move them in sooner before they fall, it would be ideal, but it is a difficult thing. I would say just continuing to uh, approach the subject slightly and uh, encouraging that they take a look at it, showing them an, an example of an apartment. And, um, you know, my, I'm a living proof that it is a better situation, both for him and, and for me and my family. So I wish you well and um, have a great day. Bye-bye. Hi, my name's John. And So, man, um, how does, you know, I think John kind of shared a little bit of that, but can you expand on how does assisted living help the adult child? Well, if you are an adult child out there, um, we call you the influencer and we recognize how busy your lives are. We recognize that you're the chef and the driver and the manager of family calendars at home that uh, then after taking care of your family, you're focusing on another family, your parents perhaps, and in focusing on them, uh, you're feeling that you just don't have quite enough to give to everyone. You become worried that that food in the refrigerator is not going to be fresh. You worry that, uh, that transportation is not going to be safe. And so you find yourself running one way and then the other, just trying to make everyone happy. And it's a hard, hard job. Um, from personal experience, I can tell you before I was in the industry, I was in your role and I was doing it long distance in, for Tucson, in Tucson, Arizona from Dallas. Um, I really was plagued with guilt. I, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't allow my loved ones to stay in their home and know their neighbors and go to church and uh, enjoy their backyard. All those things seem pretty realistic. And we tried it for a long time with in-home care and uh, long distance trips frequently. What I found and what I think often people find is that ultimately that decision to make a move is a hard one on your loved ones and somebody has to make it. And that somebody usually is the influencer, the adult child. And it's just about weighing the odds, knowing uh, that every move has uh, advantages and disadvantages. But when you look at all of them and you consider safety, uh, I think you'll find that at one point, at the right time, it will be time and the decision will be yours. And don't worry, we have your back. Thank you, Nan, for sharing your personal experience. I know many of the panelists have similar experiences that they are more than willing to share with you if you're interested in, in, in asking them and, and reaching out and they can reach out to you and, and share. Um, it just, it is a difficult time and, and, and you just need to be able to know that you're just not all things to all people, you know, you can't do everything and having that team approach that we've talked about, you know, and that cruise ship on land there to support your loved one is just, is really valuable. Um, I think this really aligns with Karen's story. Her father lives at Monticello West, and I want to share that video with you. 
Monticello was a wonderful place and a wonderful option because the new places that have been built or, or redone in the area that are senior facilities, a lot of them have been done very contemporary and they're, they're cold, they're not welcoming, they're not comfortable and they're not friendly in that way. And for my dad's age, this was very comfortable to him and I wanted something that was similar to where he was living. And this was a great fit. I like the atmosphere here. It was very homey, very comfortable and welcoming feeling to a senior and someone, you know, he's at my dad's 90. So it's very, a very nice place for him. I think from the minute you walk in, Renee at the front desk is, you know, a jewel and so helpful and so accommodating and you know, I don't think that we would have had a very good transition without Renee. She's been so sensitive to Dad and me and helped me a great deal. I mean, this has been hard for me, too. But because you want to feel like you've made a good decision. You want to feel like your loved one is safe, that everything is going right for them. And I do feel that way. But um, I feel like the care managers and especially the one that we have in the morning. I just love her to death, and she helps Dad pick out his clothes for the day and helps him, reminds me to wash his hair. And I feel very good about the nighttime caregivers as well, because I'm not here at night. And, you know, it, it is so comforting to me, even though I'm only five minutes away, to know that somebody's checking on him and checking on him at night multiple times, and also during the day they check on him. So it's very comforting, and they know his medicines. You know, part of my dad's dementia was he could not manage his medicines anymore. And they give him his medicine twice a day. And that is so comforting that I don't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. All the prescriptions just automatically get renewed. So it's, it's a wonderful burden off of me. And it was hard on me, I think, Carter, more than it was on him. I really do, because I felt so responsible. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to make a bad decision because it's difficult to move them because they become so accustomed to where they are and their things, um, being in the same place all the time, and, and it's important. And you want them to, to be comfortable and be happy. So it was important to me. So, and it was, and you know, moving for anybody, whether it's you, Physically moving, it's, it's just stressful, it's emotional. Well, I'll, I'll start with me first. The, the first thing that is uh, was first on my list was to find something that was closer to me, that I could come every day and I could be a bigger part in his life because it was obvious that I needed to be. But like I said, it's five minutes from my house which is so easy. Sometimes I come twice a day to see him now. And, you know, if I need to bring him groceries, so easy to do that. Um, grocery, the doctor's appointments, so simple. It has made my life so easy because I don't have to drive all over the place to see him or take him places for doctors. And as far as my dad's life, I think once he was here and once he realized and kind of became acclimated, to the end, to the not being independent, to being in assisted living, um, I think it was a great relief to him to feel like he didn't have to worry about all that stuff anymore. He could just relax and just enjoy these these years. You know, it has been such to me such a relief and such a, a joy. think this gives me such peace of mind and also my husband and I like to travel a lot and I feel so comfortable and good about being gone for a few days it makes my dad anxious when I leave town but and especially now that the dining room is open I think I feel good about him having a little more social outlet and being able to be more around people 
and um, it's just you know my my life is much easier. I would recommend Monticello in a minute. I love that video. Um, so I want to thank our panelists uh, for sharing their guidance and answering uh, these questions that are commonly asked. Um, we also want to send our appreciation out to the resident and family members who provided and shared those stories with us via video. Now, if you have questions that you would like to have asked, um, we ask that you enter them in the chat feature and we can answer those. Um, you can also put in your, your name and your number. We can look through that and call you back and take that conversation offline if you're more comfortable with a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So just wanted to give you a moment to ask some questions and I'll check the chat here and I can forward those on. I haven't seen anything yet. We'll give it another minute or so. We will be reaching out to each of you individually. Um, you, you've registered and you provided us with your contact information. So um, the respected community will, will reach out and follow up. Um, what determines if someone should be in assisted living or memory care? Camille, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. Um, and it's it's going to be different for every resident. Um, you know, so it's, it's really like a case-by-case -case basis. But the main things that you're looking for that indicate it's it's time for memory care would be if, um, if your loved one has cognitive impairment that is creating an unsafe environment for them in the home or in assisted living. So what that means is, you know, they're, they're exit seeking. They're looking for, a, you know, to go outside. It's time to go to work. I need to go back home, those types of things. Um, if they're no longer engaging socially with the other residents in assisted living, a lot of times that will indicate that, um, you know, they're, they're protecting, they're preserving their own dignity because they know they have cognitive impairment. They're, they don't want to socialize and, and have everyone else in the dining room notice. Um, so that, you know, they isolate themselves. Um, so those are really the two biggest indicators, you know, their safety. And then, you know, they're starting to isolate. So memory care provides support for folks with uh, different types of cognitive impairment, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, things like that, um, where they're surrounded by folks that are just like them. So a lot of times what we see when they go from assisted living, they're, they're not engaging, they're not leaving their rooms. Um, things like that, and they go to memory care, they actually thrive. They, they see folks that are just like them. They're a lot more comfortable. They participate in activities, um, you know, things like that. So I would recommend if, if you're having concerns about, you know, is it assisted living? Is it memory care? Um, talk to, you know, one of us at the community that you're interested in, and we'll ask those questions about what's really going on, you know, in the home, things like that, and, um, and we'll make our best recommendation based on your loved one's safety and then also um, their needs. So, hope that answers your question. Thank you. Another question we have is, do you pay for every, every pill, um, every bath, or is this all-inclusive pricing? Nan, do you want to take that one? I do. At Monticello West, our pricing is all inclusive. We uh, don't have add ons and we can assure a family moving in that there'll be no surprises. We actually price our rooms based on the real estate, the size of the apartment and on the level of care needed. So the same room for independent living would not be the same price as that room for basic assisted living or that room for enhanced assisted living. And then there is that same room in memory care. Each price is different, but there are no surprises. You know going in 
uh, as you look at an apartment, that price range, the lowest and the highest. Thank you. Another question we have is how do you acclimate a new resident um, so that they can make friends, they can engage in activities, um, and it looks like in this case they're saying move from one assisted living residence to another. Anne Marie, would you be comfortable answering that one? Sure. So when you're trying to acclimate someone to a new space, like I mentioned earlier, we want to know everything you can tell us about your loved one, because we want to be able to engage them in a way that will pique their interest and will say, hey, they're listening to me and what I want. And so the more information we have about them going in, the easier it is for us to mention things like, you know, you mentioned to us that your mom likes to garden. And so we make sure that you guys have a place to hang baskets outside or, you know, things she can still do. Or let's say dad used to work for an airline, you know, now we know that we can talk to him about what he did there, things like that, that all those personal details really help build those new bonds. And especially if you're moving someone from one assisted living to the other, there will be differences regardless. And so, you know, perhaps they move from a place that has these set of rules and now they're moving to a place that has these set of rules. You know, anything that we can know ahead of time to help them acclimate to that, you know, our staff is very personal in their approach with people and we approach people based on their personal needs and likes and dislikes. And our staff is also trained to help with that transition. You know, we're all trained to know that there are going to be bumps in the road, to know that they are going to be, you know, happy this day and sad another, and they're gonna miss their friends from the other place. But look, you have these friends over here too. Um, I've even had things where I had a person that moved in here that had a best buddy at the previous assisted living, and we got them to where they could have phone and video calls together so they didn't have to miss that friendship. So there's always ways, and the more that we know about the resident and their individual likes and dislikes and, you know, which side they like to get up of the bed, you know, all those things help us prepare to make this a great transition for them. Thank you. Um, I've got another question. So dad has a memory impairment. Mom's memory is okay, but she's blind. So she does need some extra care. If dad needs memory care, would mom be allowed to be with him? Nan, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I do. Um, at Monticello West, we have what we call the Jefferson Bridge Program, and it was designed exactly for this scenario. Uh, using the Jefferson Bridge, the couple could move in together and uh, spend evenings together, sleep together, or have meals together. Uh, the person with cognitive impairment would bridge, somebody would knock on the door in the morning and take him to memory care where he could engage throughout the day, be stimulated and uh, drive, which is the goal, while the mom or the wife would stay in the assisted living environment, uh, taking part in assisted living activities and be guided you know, through her vision challenges there. So it's sort of the best of both worlds and it's been a very, very successful program. Thank you. I've got another question. I'm looking for assisted living for two people, mother and father. Does any community offer spacious rooms for two people? Who wants to take that one? I can take that. Um, I think um, at Signature Point, um, we actually had that happen um, and we designed two of our studios and we connected them together, which enabled us to have a very large 800 square foot um, one bedroom that actually had two bathrooms. 
Um, so depending on the community, I think Monticello West also has some really good options uh, for assisted living with two bedrooms. Um, so there are a lot of um, opportunities for couples in assisted living. Okay. And then I'd like to hear more about Medicaid benefits and how much assistance should be anticipated. Nancy? I, I can take that again too. So Medicaid is very tricky. Um, it really depends on a lot of things. So you really have to work with the communities. Um, we can send you some guidelines that we've got. I've got a couple of brochures that I can give to Teresa and she can post for you guys. Um, but there are limits. There are financial limits and there are also um, medical limits. So you have to actually, um, your criteria has to be met for both financial and medical. And then when you're looking at Medicaid, you're looking at finding a bed that's available at the right time. So working with a community or moving into a community that actually has Medicaid beds, a community that you like, um, is really essential if you're looking at Medicaid down the road because being in a community already that has Medicaid enables you to, you know, work with the team, get to know the team, the team gets to know your family or loved one. And it's much easier for us to try to transition somebody within the community into a Medicaid bed and work with a family than for you to actually find a Medicaid bed and move into it when it's time. And I think a lot of times there's a lot of communities out there that are um, assisted living based communities and they offer Medicaid beds. But what happens is if you're at an assisted living community and they offer Medicaid beds, most in most cases, they're not going to offer a Medicaid bed when your loved one becomes memory care. Um, so it's very difficult then you have to then scramble and look for a Medicaid bed for a memory care um, resident. So it's always wise to work with a community. Um, I know that Signature Point and uh, Walnut Place, we both offer Medicaid beds and Camille and I would be happy to work with any of you if you have additional questions after the call, um, you can feel free to reach out to either one of us. All right, thank you. Well, that is all the questions we have in the chat. So I really appreciate everyone's time. Thank you panelists for joining us today and sharing your expertise. And we each of them will reach out to you um, afterwards and follow up to see if you have any additional questions. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining. Thanks Teresa and thanks for the, everyone that joined. We enjoyed it.